So Hyatt was watching a, uh, I believe it was a video from a Ninja Trader presentation, and um, you know, and this gentleman was showing how to basically use the chart trader um, in a more um, advanced way, I guess you could say. So, and he was setting up uh, a couple of ATMs in his presentation. And Hines wanted to know how to recreate these ATMs in Blackbird. So that's what I'm going to show here. So there's two different ATMs here. Um, all right, we have one ATM that just has a, a one target. Um, and then we have a second ATM that has two targets. Right? So we'll go over those uh, first. Those ought to be pretty simple. So let's start with the one target ATM here. And um, all right, so to do that, let me get Blackbird up and running. So we'll go into the strategy window here. All right, there's our Blackbird. And let's see, I just need to enable it there. And I guess just in case I, depending on, uh, I get asked some questions coming up, I'll turn the start auto enabled on. There. So the ATM, just to clarify, the, the ATM, you know, to run this ATM doesn't require this start auto enabled to be set to true. That That's just a preference I just did just for maybe some other questions that might come in um, later so but you know to set Blackbird up to run like, a, like an ATM you can just use the all the, the default options here so nothing special has to be set to mimic an ATM all right let's get the order settings window open and get to work here all right. Um, well, so an ATM doesn't have any place to specify the order type, right? You actually do that on the chart, um, right? So an ATM, all it does is it just has a stop loss and a profit target setting, right? It doesn't have an entry setting, right? So if you're chart, using the chart trader, which, uh, that's right. I can't turn the chart trader on because I've got a strategy running. So, but you know, if you're familiar enough with Ninja Trader, you'll know that you know you when you bet the chart trader on, that's where you would determine if you're going to submit, you know, a market order or a limit order or a stop order. Here. So, but within within Blackbird, right? You need to have your order predefined here. So. Um, so in this case, I'll just go with the market order, All right? So your entry order has nothing to do with an ATM here. So the profit target and the stop loss is really what ATMs uh, manage here. So let's take a look at our screenshot. So we have a profit target of 30. So let's take our profit target. And so we'll set it to 10 ticks. And then we'll go in here and modify it to 30 ticks to match our screenshot. So we'll just up this to 30 like so. And there we go. Uh, so 30 tick profit target. And that matches our screen, our screenshot here of the ATM. 30 ticks. All right. So that's the easy part. And next we'll do the stop loss. So the initial stop loss is a 20 tick. Uh, it's going to be a 20 tick stop loss there. So let's go into stop loss. We'll select 10 ticks. And then I'm going to go in here and modify it so that it's 20 ticks. So there is our initial placement. And then we have the second screenshot here, 
um, with some auto trailing and a break even. So let's set up the break even first and then we'll add this trailing rule. All right, so let's go back into our stop loss. So we, we need to go into the trailing actions tab and we need to set the mode. We'll set this to custom and then we'll add a trailing rule. So let's see, what is our trailing rule here? To slide this over. So it's a at six ticks, um, and a profit of six ticks plus one as our break even. All right, so let's let's re let's set a name here. So this is gonna be a break even. Um, Let's see, break even plus, oops, plus one um, at six ticks, at six ticks of profit. All right, so uh, we're going to, we'll use the initial delay and we'll set the initial delay there to six ticks in direction, right, six ticks in direction, so that's six ticks in profit. All right, so that's our profit trigger, our profit trigger, there of six ticks, and then we need uh, the plus one there. So now we just jump over to the action, and we have to move that stop loss up to plus one. So uh, we're going to move it to. So we're going to go in here and change the price. So we don't want to move it to the last price. We want to move it to the break to the entry price, I'm sorry, the entry price, well, which is break even. So remember your entry price is your break even. And then plus one. There we go. So there's our break even rule. Uh, next, let's go down to the auto trailing um, rule here. So, um, Let's see. All right, so it's going to become a five tick trailing stop loss. It's going to move every tick in profit. The frequency is every one tick in profit, and the profit trigger is going to be 10 ticks. So, um, all right, so think of the profit trigger as your initial delay. Right. Our profit tick trigger is the same thing as the initial delay column here. All right, so let's add another, we're going to add another rule here. So we'll just call it trailing. So our profit trigger is going to, is the same as the initial delay. So we'll go put a 10 tick profit trigger in there. All right, so 10 ticks in direction. And the next component is we'll put in the stop loss distance. So um, it would be kind of handy if they, could, if they would put in here stop loss distance. That's what this is. So it's a five tick distance. So again, that's our action. So, you know, the distance of the stop loss, that's your action. So, you, you know, where, where do you move your stop loss? Well, it's, we're going to move our stop loss. Um, this time we're going to use the last price because it's going to be the last price with a five tick offset or five tick distance. So you can, now uh, I guess they could call this a stop loss offset of five ticks as well. So there we go. So we take the last price and minus five ticks if you're in a long position, right? It's the last price minus five ticks or five ticks down. Um, right, so there we go. And then the last component here is the frequency. How often do we update the stop loss? And they've got one tick. So that's going to be our repeat. The frequency is the repeat. You know, how often do we repeat the trailing here? So we're going to repeat indefinitely. And so we want to repeat every one 
and it's going to be one tick. So let's change it from bars to ticks. So again, we're going to use ticks indirection. So there we go. So we're going to repeat this every one tick in direction, like so. And that's that's it. So we're done. Right? Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, and so let's see here. Let's um, let me save this here. Let's see if there's some kind of a name on this screenshot. No, it doesn't look like it. All right. Well, let me just save this anyways. And so let me just grab the date. So there's the 17th, and um, all right, so this is the uh, kind of simple ATM. Let's see. Um, actually, I'll just call this ATM uh, one target. Yeah, this just has one target. And one trailing rule there. All right, that looks good. All right, we'll save that. There we go. So we've got that file saved. So this file will be, uh, uh, will be linked. Uh, in the video once the video gets posted up. Of course, you guys can always email us ahead of time and get a copy of these files before we get those videos up. So, um, All right, so that one's done. Let me close this one out and let's bring up the next screenshot. Here. All right, so this one's a little more advanced. So we have two profit targets and um, we have two, two different trailing rules here. Two different trailing rules here. Uh, right? One set of trailing rules for the stop loss for the first profit target, and then the second profit target has two different uh, trailing rules here. So this one will get a little more advanced. Okay, so let me clear this out. There we go. And let's go ahead and start this. So again, I'm going to start with the market order here. Um, you know, so when you get, if you guys decide to get these files, of course, once you have the file, you can easily go in here and change this from a market to a limit order, you know, and change your limit order um, entry price. You know, as you guys see fit, you know, to tailor it to your guys' needs here. But for the moment, let's just leave it as a market order. And all right, so let's set up the profit target. So let's see, we have a 20 tick profit target. So we'll go in there, modify this to 20 ticks here. All right, and I'll go ahead and start setting up the second profit target as well. So just need to add a zero. That's a 100 tick profit target there. All right. So here we go. Profit target of 20 ticks, profit target of 100 ticks. So right there. Right there, there are two different targets. All right, let's work on the trailing stop loss rules here um, for the first profit target. So let's see, the, we're both, so both profit targets have a 25 tick initial stop loss. So let's go in there and set this up 25. There we go. All right, and I'll just um, 
jump over to the trailing actions so we can start making um, making those break even and trailing rules there. All right, so let's see, our break even is at, at 10 ticks of profit, we go to a negative, um, negative eight tick um, break even. So it's a break even minus eight ticks at 10 ticks of profit. So, all right, so let's name this here. Um, so it's not really a break even, but um, minus eight at 10 ticks, at 10 ticks of profit. All right, so again, our initial delay is going to be 10 ticks in profit. All right, so that's right here. Our profit trigger is 10 ticks. So at 10 ticks, there we go. So we'll just set a delay of 10 ticks. Um, and then our action, our action is going to be the entry price. And instead of a plus one tick, we're going to do a negative eight ticks, as it says right here. Right, so it's minus eight ticks right there. Okay, and you know the break evens. This you know this auto break even uh, component of the ATM that only occurs once. So I didn't mention this the last time, but um, you know so since it only occurs once, we leave the repeat uh, at none. Just leave the repeat at, at its default setting of none because we, the action, we only do the action once, right? So that, you know, Ninja's ATM only performs this auto break even component here just once. So leave the repeat at none. All right, let's add the other trailing rule here. All right, so we have a profit trigger of 14. All right. So let's go into our delay and we'll set that up to 14. Like so there we go. There's our profit trigger, 14 ticks in direction. Um, and let's see here. Our stop loss is 13. So let's go to the, the last here, or I'm sorry, we're going to go to the action here and change the last to, um, let, let's see, no, actually that's right. We leave it on last. We just need to put the negative 13 in here. There we go. And the frequency is every 100 ticks every 100 ticks. So let's go in here and we'll repeat indefinitely and we want 100 and we just need to change bars to ticks. So there we go, every 100 ticks in direction, that's our frequency there. So. Um, Basically, it looks like really this. Uh, really, it looks like actually this stop loss is never going to move. Actually, um, well, it'll move once. So let's see. So when we get ten ticks in profit, it'll move to negative eight, and then when we get to fourteen ticks in profit, um, it'll move. Yeah, our stop loss will move to 13 ticks. Stop loss that puts us to a plus, a break even plus one. Ah, okay, yeah. So basically, um, the person who designed this set this step one to become a break even plus one. Yeah, so the auto break even 
is really just pulling the stop loss up um, to a, an eight tick loss. Yeah, to an eight tick loss for the stop loss. And then when we get to 14 ticks in profit, it becomes a break even plus one based on this distance here. Yeah. So, um, all right. So there's the trailing rules for the first profit target right there. So let's switch over to the second profit target. So that's going to be this, this um, window right here. We'll build the rules for this window here. So let's make our, set up our stop loss and go into our initial placement. And we want to set this to uh, 25. There we go. So our initial placement is a 25 tick stop loss. Then we go into our trailing actions. And let's set up some custom rules here. All right, so let's set up our break even here. Again, it's a negative 8 at you know, 10, 10 ticks. Okay, so let's set our initial delay to 10 ticks again. And then the action is going to be the entry price minus 8 ticks. There we go. Entry price minus 8 ticks. And let's see. Yep. Repeat. Leave that at none. So the auto break even is just a one time action. So we'll leave the repeat at none. All right. So now we have step one and step two. So let's do this here. So I guess I could call this step one. And let's see, step one, our profit trigger is 14 ticks. There we go, 14 ticks in direction. Um, the stop loss is uh, a 13 tick stop loss. So let's go in here, so it's Set that to a negative 13 ticks. And there we go. So it's going to be the last price minus 13 ticks. That's our stop loss. 13 tick offset. Frequency is every seven ticks. So, um, yeah, all right. So every seven ticks. So let's do repeat indefinitely. And we're going to set our repeat to every seven ticks. And there we go. Every seven ticks in direction. All right. So now, step two. And let's see, step two has a profit target of 20. There we go, 20. And let's see, our, our offset here is a 20 tick. It becomes a 20 tick offset. Let's go in here and change our action. So it's going to be a last um, minus 20. And let's see, we have the frequency is every tick. So let's change our repeat to every tick. There we go. All right, so um, let's see. All right, so. Looking at this, we do need to make uh, some subtle adjustments uh, in Blackbird, um, right? So with with an ATM, um, 
you know, the ATM just goes, just follows step one, and then, and then it goes to step two, you know, based on the profit trigger. So basically, once a 20 tick profit has been made, Ninja Trader, you know, the ATM just ignores step one. It'll just ignore step one after 20 ticks of profit. So once step two kicks in by the profit trigger of 20 ticks being made, then step one is just ignored. So, but Blackbird, it uses, you know, it has this evaluate using. So, you know, so when you have multiple rules here, and since step one and step two will repeat indefinitely, right, Blackbird will evaluate step one and step two, you know, uh, indefinitely. And the way that we determine, you know, which, which one of these trailing rules actually fires off is based of our, based off of our evaluate using here. So, um, so looking at this, basically step two gets converted to a 20 tick. Um, stop loss. Right? It's a 20 tick stop loss. So the stop loss is going to be further away from price. Right? It's going to be a wider stop loss. Step one is a much closer stop loss. It's only a 13 tick offset. Um, so the way we can accomplish that, so since they're not tightening the stop loss up, they're actually loosening the stop loss, we need to set our evaluate using to action furthest from price, right, the action furthest from price, so, <clears throat> um, and so what will happen is once we get 14 ticks in profit, step one is going to fire off, uh, but step two can't fire off yet because we don't have our 20 ticks in profit. So step two just gets ignored because our delay has not been met yet, right? Our 20 ticks in profit has not been met yet. So step, step two just gets ignored, right? Same thing with an ATM. Step two gets ignored because we don't have, uh, there's not 20 ticks in profit yet. But as soon as you get to 14 ticks in profit, then step one will kick in. And the same thing with Blackbird, right? 14 ticks in profit will occur first. So step one will kick in. Um, and since there, you know, since there's only one trailing rule here to evaluate, you know, our evaluate using furthest from price, you know, that doesn't this the evaluate using really isn't kicking in yet because there's only one rule to evaluate, which would be step one at 14 ticks of profit, right? So our break even. That's already occurred, but that only fires off once. So as soon as our break-even rule fires off, right, it only fires off once, and then it gets ignored. It never gets evaluated again, right? So, so only step one can get evaluated at 14 ticks of profit. But now, once we get to 20 ticks in profit and step two gets evaluated, now step one and step two will both get evaluated but what we want, well, I, you know, just by looking at the design of this, you know, of these trailing rules here, um, you know, step two, which is a wider, you know, that's a 20 tick stop loss, so that's a, that's furthest, that's further from price. So step two is what's getting evaluated. So that's why we need to change our evaluate using to furthest. So. Um, or, you know, there's also another way that you could also look at this, approach this, right? So um, with a 14 tick profit target, we get, um, you know, the 14 tick profit target. If we look at the frequency, um, it's set to seven. So the next time that step one is gonna trigger is going to be 14 plus 7, which is 21 ticks in profit. And of course, we can see that, well, at 21 ticks of profit, step 2 is going to have already kicked in. Because step 2 kicks in at 20 ticks in profit. So step 
two will kick in before step one gets a chance to um, move the stop loss again. All right, so at 14 ticks, our stop loss gets moved, but then it has to wait for seven more ticks in profit, which makes it 21 ticks in profit. But step two will kick in ahead of time. So, you know, mathematically and logically, we can, we can figure out that step one actually only kicks in once, you know, because step two will kick in um, at 20 ticks of profit. So it'll kick in before step two. I'm sorry, step two will kick in before step one gets a chance to, to move the stop loss a second time. So step one only gets a chance to move the stop loss once, and then step two will kick in at 20 ticks of profit there. So, so that's another way, you know, of approaching this. So we could just leave, you know, evaluate using, we could just leave this on the default. And since we know that step one only gets a chance to kick in once, you know, we could just change this to no repeat, right? So, so it only does the action once. And then step two is the one that just repeats um, indefinitely. So, the, you know, so there was two ways to kind of set this up and you get the same behavior out of Blackbird, right? So it just kind of shows, uh, you know, Blackbird's got a lot more flexibility built into it. Um, so, um, you know, this to me um, seems a little simpler. So I'll, I'll leave it this way here. Um, yep. So, all right. Um, that's that. That's all done. So, uh, let's see. You know, the one thing that Blackbird does not have is this simulated stop um, based on a volume trigger. So, then again, I've never seen anybody use this simulated stop. Um, it does, it is, you know, my, pers my personal opinion is that it is kind of dangerous to use. Um, you know, because this is something that sits on your computer. It's not residing at the exchange. So, you know, things can happen that you don't want. So, um, you know, and since nobody's really, since I've never, actually, I, let me correct that. I've seen one person use this. Um, and that was a long, long time ago. Um, and after a while, that person just stopped using it. So, yeah, so we didn't really see any benefit of trying to build this into Blackbird. So, um, you know, plus, if you have a really bad data feed, you know, this could, this volume trigger could be disastrous as well. You know, it won't trigger off correctly if you have a bad um, data feed connection as well. All right, so anyways, that little comment, uh, we're done here. So let me um, go in and uh, we'll do a save as. Let's see, so we got two profit trigger and uh, we also have a two trailing rules. All right, hit save and there we go. So let's, uh, yeah, let's play with this. Let's Right, and I um, guess I'll just go ahead and go along there. All right, there is our two profit targets and our two stop losses. So let's just inch the market up and watch this play out. And I'll just uh, let's just change the trend here. Let's just, just get this thing going. All right, so now um, our last contract here is just a, a 20 tick, um, you know, just a simple 20 tick following stop loss. So it's just going to inch up. Oh, 
it's just going to follow it all the way up there. So, all right. So I don't see any questions. So there we go. Um, all right. So let me let's switch over to um, Jeff's question here. All right. So Jeff would just like to see um, a simple entry and exit um, and just yes yeah, something simple so you can see some back testing um, and he also has questions about using blackbird in the optimizer as well so all right yeah let's cover the optimizer here um, and let's see And there was another question, and oh yeah, and he would like to see this done using the backtest Ranko bars. Okay, backtest Ranko bars. All right, let me pull up another chart here. All right, so I'll load the chart up with backtest off for now. And let's see, let's just load three days of data. I want to try to load up a little faster. And um, let's see, I'm gonna, well, actually, let me switch it over to oil. Hopefully, I've got some data here for oil. Yep, there we go. Good. We've got some data for oil. All right. So there's our back test, Ranko, um, but it's not in back test mode. All right, so there, there you go. There it is in normal Ranko mode. Right, looks like a normal kind of median type Ranko. Um, but since this is for the purpose of back testing, we're going to set it to back test mode. So we're going to set that on. And there we go. So now you'll notice it looks. These bars look a lot different because now the bars are back testable. So, all right, let me set the trend down here. So, minimize that. Um, all right, so you know you'll notice the bars look totally different, and the reason why is because the open price of the bar. is the true opening price of the bar. That's what makes a bar type back testable with NinjaTrader, is you need the true opening price of the bar to, you know, to simulate back testing with NinjaTrader. So, right. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, what's probably, what's also really important, you know, about getting a, especially with a Ranko type bar, is on this reversal bars you need the true opening price you know which is truly down here you know versus you know if it was in normal mode you would have an opening price which is way up here but really your opening price is down here right. so having the true opening price you can see makes a big difference in your back testing so let me get blackbird on here And we want to do some back testing, so we'll leave our back test mode on, like so. And let's turn our strategy on. And um, let's see, yeah, I guess I'll just clear all the data there, all the performance data. All right, so let's open up our order set. Um, all right, so just yeah, to use a, so we want a simple, a simple signal. Um, and let's see. I guess yeah, I'll just have to use a bloodhound signal for this. 
and I just have a very simple, you know, testing bloodhound signal. And I'm just going to use a price inflection or basically a price reversal. Just a simple price reversal whenever price reverses. Um, all right, that'll generate a signal. So let's select that logic template from Bloodhound. There we go. Um, and let's see. I don't think we have an yeah. No, don't have any exit logic here. So, um, yeah, we'll just use a stop loss as our exit here. Um, let's see. How about, we'll just use a parabolic SAR for our stop loss. Yeah. Let's grab a parabolic SAR. Let's see here. Um, Let's see, parabolic SAR, that's right. It should all be default settings here for the parabolic SAR. Let's see, yeah, 02, 0 0.2, 02. Yeah, I believe those are just the default settings for the parabolic SAR. So let me throw that indicator on the chart so we can see it. And all right. Actually, change the colors here. I'll make them a little thicker, easier to see. There we go. All right. So there's our parabolic SAR, um, you know, indicator being used as a stop loss. Um, And I believe we have everything set up. Yeah. Let's see. I guess I could just throw a profit target in there as well. Let's see. Let's make it something something crazy here. There we go. Nice huge stop loss. I mean profit target. Nice big profit target. Um, and um, Let's see, yeah, we'll need to save this in order to open it up in the strategy analyzer. All right, so I'm just going to call this the strategy analyzer example. Um, yeah. Let's see, let me just also include in here with a bloodhound signal. All right. So, you know, just to be, you know, just to clarify one important point here, in order to get back test results, of course, you have to have some kind of a trade signal, right? So you do have to have a trade signal to get any kind of back test results, right? So if you're not, you know, if you're not using um, the trade signals, then, uh, then you know, Blackbird is not set up for automated trading, right? So, uh, if you leave your trade signals blank, then you know, then you, you're just using Blackbird for discretionary trading. So, but once you've got some trade signals plugged into Blackbird, then you can use it for automated trading. And once you have an automated trading system set up, then you can get back test results. Right? So. Um, all right, we'll just save that. So, and let's shrink the chart up a little bit here. So, all right, you'll notice that there's no backtest results um, yet, right? So we basically we've just set Blackbird up. We've set it up. So now, if we want backtest results. Um, you know, 
two things that have to happen. So first, the first thing that has to happen, let's go, let's go back into the actual strategy parameters here. So remember, when I loaded Blackbird onto this chart, I turned the auto start enabled to true, and we left back test mode on as well. So back test mode is left on at true. All right, so that's the first thing is you gotta get back test mode set to true. And you gotta turn the auto enable on as well. And so you gotta set both of those to true. So that's step one that's, that you have to do to get any back test results. All right. And then once you have, you know, then once you've got Blackbird all set up, then you'll have to refresh the chart to get NinjaTrader to recalculate the whole chart again. So that'll cause NinjaTrader to, uh, right, so reloading the NinjaScript or refreshing your chart, right, that forces NinjaTrader to um, basically rebuild the chart and so therefore it restarts Blackbird and that way you can get um, some back test results. And, oh, Hold on a sec. Let's, let's close this trade out here. There we go. And uh, let's see. Just a, let me do one more thing. I'm going to go into the account performance. Yeah, see, I figured I've got some results in there, so I'm just going to reset that. Clear that out there. All right, so now I'm going to reload, refresh the chart here. And you'll see the buttons flicker here, so that's telling you that some backtesting is going on here. All right, so as soon as this chart loads up, we should see some, some, uh, some um, trade, um, trade markers on the chart there. All right, and also Blackbird popped popped uh, the Bloodhound signals on the chart here as well, so we can go up here to the pull, the Bloodhound's pull down menu, and remember we're using the price inflection as our entry signals. So there we go. Um, all right, and let's let me take a look here. Oh, this is an interesting trade. So we use the parabolic SAR, and look here. Our wick came down here, came down just enough <laughs> to touch our parabolic SAR, and our stop loss got hit there. Yeah. So, um, and Let's see, we're missing some trades. Yeah, we should have a bunch of trades going on here. Let's see if there's something in the log. Um, oh, right. So, yeah. So here's kind of the, um, you know, some of the Thing, uh, you know, a, a situation to be aware of when you are, you know, using indicators to kind of set up a fully automated system here. So you notice we have a short signal here, right? But look where our parabolic SAR is. Our parabolic SAR is below where price is, right? So. You know, so that would put our stop loss below the market for a short trade, which of course you can't do, right? The exchange is just going to reject your stop loss. So therefore, if you look at all these trades here, um, you know, the, the parabolic SAR is on the wrong side of the trade. So, you know, so you've got all of these um, illegal stop loss prices. And so therefore, Blackbird could not um, Blackbird could not execute the trade because the stop loss is on the wrong side of the market. You know, so that's one thing to be aware of when you're using indicators here to, uh, um, uh, to you know, to set up trading. So uh, let's scroll back here, and um, 
Yeah, luckily, you know, luckily on this one, um, this reversal bar, well, actually, per the parabolic star came down enough so that when we got this reversal bar, it flipped the parabolic star, you know, into the correct position for the stop loss there. So, so therefore, we actually got a trade going on there. Yeah. So let's look at look at this. Um, look at these here. Yeah, interesting. So, right. So we couldn't get we couldn't get this short trade because the parabolic SAR is on the wrong side. And um, let's see. Yeah, so finally we were able to get this re short trade here. Parabolic SAR was on the correct side of the market for the short trade. Yeah. Um, until, uh, let's see here. Yeah, until the trade got closed out because we got a signal in the opposite direction. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, so that yeah, that little little side, uh, some side information there. Um, so all right. So anyways, we got some back test results here. So now we can go into uh, Ninja Trader strategy performance here, and you can look at your results that way. So there we go. So there's our results. Um, uh, not too good, but then again. <laughs> Right, we just threw this together. Um, so it took, um, let's see, for three days of data on the chart, it took 318 trades. Uh, wow, quite a bit. Uh, but then again, well, at the same time, these are trades taking 24 hours. You know, I didn't go in there and really um, set things up, you know, for day trading. So I guess, you know, probably something else um, that, you, you know, you might want to do is go into the scheduling so that way, you know, we can make sure that the trades are only taking place during, um, you know, if you're a day trader, right, if you're a day trader, you only want to trade during the regular trading hours, right, so that, that way you're using lower margins. So. So there we go. So there's our schedule for the regular trading hours. Um, and then um, we could also make sure that the trades uh, get closed out, get exited. So, um, you know, right here it's exits, you know, 30 seconds um, before the session ends. You know, I think, I think most brokers are let you keep a position open for about 30 seconds after the market closes, maybe a minute or two. All depends on your broker. You know, you have to check with them. But so let's just make sure that we close out all of our trades at least 30 seconds after the market closes. So that'd be 30 seconds after 4 p.m. Eastern time. Right. So there we go. So let's let's save that and. We can refresh the chart again. Uh, actually, just a sec here. Let's clear out our performances again. All right, now let's re we'll refresh the chart and we'll get new results with trades only taking place during during market hours. Actually, let's let's see. Let's take a. Let's, let me scroll through the chart here and see if there's any trades overnight. And oh yeah, here we go. Here's a bunch of a bunch of early morning trades that will all get um, eliminated. Yeah, lots of uh, early morning trade trading going on there. So, all right. So let's refresh the chart. We'll get some new results. And while we're waiting on that, I see some comments. Might have come in here. Um, let's see. Yeah. So Jeff is saying, well, maybe the parabolic SAR help, helps keep you out of chop. Uh, yeah, it might. It 
it definitely looked like it did uh, help with a little bit of the chop, for sure. Yeah. It's an interesting accidental discovery. All right, so hey, so now we can see. So here we are, 6 in the morning, and all these trades are gone. Right? No more trades anymore until we get to the market hours. All right, so 7.30 my time is when the market opens. 7.30 my time. Um, so there we go. So now we've got some trade results coming in here. So, and uh, yeah, so now if you pull up your strategy performance and um, huh, luckily it made a difference there. Um, and let's see, also, what do we got? Periods. Um, There we go, hour of day. And so we can see that you know, with that scheduler turned on, you know, we can see that the hours that are showing up are, are the market trading hours. So uh, 7.30 um, to 2 o'clock you know, is the market hours for my time zone. So we can see there's no trades outside of the market hours here. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so now let's, let's see. I think it's time to step over to the market analyzer now. All right, so that's, that's a, uh, an example of just um, getting some quick results on your chart, right? Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, so let's pull up a market analyzer. I'm sorry, um, strategy analyzer. All right, so we've got the strategy analyzer here. Here we go. Um, so let's open up the back testing, slide this out, and let's go select our Blackbird. There we go. So, um, let's load up the file into Blackbird. There we go. And let me just double check the scheduler. And great, yep, the scheduler got saved to the file. All right, so we have the file loaded up. We're good to go. Um, and let's see here. We need to set the start auto enabled, set, turn that on. So that way back test mode could be also turned on, set to true. And next, uh, let's see, set up our bar types. And um, there we go, back test Renko. Um, we want back test mode on. All right, and um, let's see. Uh, for, uh, yeah, I'll just use the default is what I've got on the chart. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I don't want to. Don't want to backtest a whole year because that would just take way too long waiting for a ninja trader to build all that bar data. So let's um, so let me just kind of go back a couple of days here. And let's see. Yeah, that that's it. Alright. So that's it for the Blackbird settings here. And then next, let's see, we were on oil. Yep. All right. So let me select oil here. And I believe we're ready to go. All right. So this time we'll pull the strategy analyzer up again. And um, this time I'll do a couple of things that. Uh, 
that I should have done to begin with. Um, I did skip a couple of steps here. That's always a good, always good, good um, practice to do ahead of time. So remember, I was running the simulated data feed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the real data feed that I have. All right. So before you run the strategy analyzer, it's good practice to uh, go to your historical data manager. And we want to download the data ahead of time. Uh, all right. So yeah, we'll go from the 10th to the 17th. And since we're doing Renko bars, we need tick data, right? We need tick data. Um, and let's see. Oh, well, let's see if I can download the continuous contract. Oh, good. Yeah. Looks like, yeah. So I'm able to download the continuous contract. So I'll do that. But you know, also just for good measure, I'm going to download the current contract as well, just in case. So, oil doesn't have a lot of volume, so it's a pretty quick contract to download. All right, so there we go. I got some data downloaded. Um, all right, and um, now the next step is I'm going to disconnect from the data feed when running the strategy analyzer. So remember, so last time I was connected to the simulated data feed when running the strategy analyzer, and I didn't think that would interfere because that's not real market data coming in. But who knows? It, it might have. So, um, so I'm going to disconnect the data feed and then bring up the strategy analyzer. All right, so those are two, two steps I didn't do last time, which was download my data and disconnect from my data feed. So I was just being a little sloppy there. Um, all right, so let's bring up our, okay, there we go. So let's just, let me, I'm just going to quickly go through this and set all the settings back up the way I had them. All right, I'm going to clear the performance. You know, I don't think you need to clear the performance. Um, I'm just doing it just for good practice. Um, it, you know, actually the account performance won't interfere with any of the back test results because, because I don't have any money management rules turned on. But if I did have some money management rules turned on here, then you definitely want to go and clear your account performance. Right, because Blackbird's designed to, you know, remember the current day's performance, and also, in, you know, just in case, you know, NinjaTrader shuts down and you restart things, you know. Um, so, if you are using money management rules, definitely go in here and clear your account performance, so that, so that um, you don't have old performance information in there, which would, um, you know, which would uh, trigger some of your money management rules a little too early. All right. Uh, so let's see. All right, just gonna go in here and all right, set back test mode on and. All right, should be good to go. Select my contract and there we go. Okay, yeah, you know, so, so you know, sometimes those couple of early steps, you know, does uh, does really help out. Uh, does really help the strategy analyzer. So. Um, you know, just a reminder, you know, download your data and then disconnect from your data feed here. Um, and the 
let's see. Uh, hmm. Total trades. No trades. Why didn't we get any trades? Oh, gosh darn it. I guess it didn't get my double click there. So back test mode. Uh, or no, actually, I did click it by accident. Yeah. So I did turn it off by accident. So let's run this again. There we go. Now we got some results. And of course, we can pull up the chart. So while that's building, oh, that was pretty quick. Uh, if I want to, I can set up, uh, select the correct Bloodhound logic here so I can see the signals on there. Um, there we go. So, uh, let's see. Let me get to Jeff's early question. So how did I shrink the chart? You can just put your mouse down here on the time bar and just drag. Right? You just drag your mouse across. So, ninja, little ninja shortcut there. Um, all right, so now that we got the chart up here, let me just take a look at the other questions here. Um, Let's see. Jeff is asking, does BlackBerry use its own backtesting engine? Absolutely not. There's actually, um, well, no, that's not true. You could build your own backtesting engine if you wanted to, um, but you know, it's not going to be any better than Ninja Traders. You know, I can, you know, I mean, I can tell you that nobody, nobody's built, nobody can build a better backtesting engine than Ninja Trader can. So there's no point in doing that. Um, you know, it's just a ton of extra work, and you don't get any benefits out of it. So all back testing is performed by NinjaTrader. So, you know, and, and actually, in, in fact, NinjaTrader really kind of does the majority of the work. Um, you know, strategies. The only thing a strategy does. You know, so for example, Blackbird and Raven, the only thing those strategies really do is they just decide when to submit an order, you know, and they decide what type of order to submit, um, and then, um, you know, when to flatten the trade, or, you know, or if, if your strategy submits a stop loss, your strategy just decides, you know, when to move your stop loss around. Uh, you know that that's really that's all that strategies do right the, the end result of what a strategy does is very simplistic um, and then ninja trader does all the rest ninja trader actually takes that order information from the strategy and then ninja trader actually does all the work after that point of which would be you know submitting it to the market if it's a live order or if you're just doing sim trading you know the ninja trader takes that order information and then it calculates you know um, it it does all the calculations to uh, generate the back test results or the sim test results let's see so Jeff was saying it was so much easier when I ran the back test in Blackbird well I guess easier than what um, <laughs> um, you know, running a back test, back testing your strategy really hasn't changed. Um, has has never really changed. So uh, even in Ninja Trader Eight, um, you know, running your back test is going to be the same. They haven't really changed the strategy analyzer. They've kind of thrown, I think, a few a few extra tidbits into the strategy analyzer, but. As far as back testing with Ninja Trader 8, really nothing's changed. Um, they've just added a couple of little extra en enhancements, I think, from what I remember. Um, all right, so let's see. The next question um, was the optimizer. So let's uh, let's switch over here to the optimizer. And there we go. All right, so yeah, you'll notice the title here says "Optimize Now." All right, um, and you'll see that really there there is there are no parameters here to be optimized. 
All right. So this whole interface has to be um, modified for optimization to occur. All right. So um, and this menu can't be modified on the fly. So that's the problem with um, optimizing our uh, Blackbird or Raven. You know, it's because this menu system, you know, the menu system that NinjaTrader uses can't be modified on the fly. Right. So if you're, you know, so uh, you know, the standard way that NinjaTrader allows optimization is you have to pre-program, you know, into your interface, you know, what, what, um, you know, what indicator periods you want to be able to optimize. You know, so you have to expose your indicator periods. You know, basically, you have to expose your indicator settings. You know, if you want to optimize stop loss or profit target values, you have to expose that here um, ahead of time. You know, so it's always out there. You know, but the thing about Blackbird is, you know, you can go in here and create stuff on the fly. And you know, NinjaTrader doesn't allow you to take these changes on the fly and modify your your um, your parameters window on the fly, right? So it's because of that limitation with NinjaTrader. It's the reason why we can't get information exposed to the optimizer. So, so. Um, However, since Raven, since Raven is a very simple strategy, Raven does have some settings that could be optimized, um, right? So since the profit target and stop loss is exposed in this menu, you can optimize your profit target and stop loss here. So you can see, you can open this up and you can set some optimization values in here for your profit target and stop loss, right? And that's because Raven, you know, it's simplistic and we've exposed, you know, and well, we've, Raven doesn't have the interface that Blackbird does, right? It just has, um, you know, the interface is, is uh, a standard interface, you know, with this, you know, with using NinjaTrader's, you know, menu system here. So, um, let's see, what else? Um, can you, uh, yeah, that's right. Also, if you're using a limit order with Raven, um, the limit order and, oh, interesting. Hmm. Well, for some reason, Raven wasn't able to recognize this, this um, integer value as being optimized. Hmm. No. But the cancel after that could be optimized. Hmm. For some reason, this yeah, this this value here, IntraTrader doesn't see it as optimizable, even though it's a number. Uh, so all right, well, bummer. I guess you can't optimize the limit order offset for Raven. So, anyways, I don't want to get into Raven too much. That's in tomorrow's workshop. So. Um, yeah, so going back to Blackbird. So, you know, bottom line is, you know, there's nothing optimizable uh, with Blackbird. So, um, you know, just to kind of throw this out there, but absolutely making no promises, but Jeremy thinks he may have found a way to expose information. Um, to the optimizer, but it's just a theory. So it's only a theory now. You know, it, it, it's going to take a, a lot of uh, back-end programming to actually see if it gets working here. But that that will be, um, Jeremy won't get around to testing this theory until we've converted everything over to Ninja 8. Right, so converting to Ninja 8 is high, much higher priority. It's a very high priority, you know, versus getting the optimizer uh, 
I guess getting some parameters to into the optimizer. So, um, all right. Well, that's I think that covers it for the two questions I had um, that were emailed in. You know, they was just saying that Jeremy is a pretty good programmer. Um, yeah, I gotta say, Jeremy is a really good programmer. Um, in my personal experience, you know, compared to the other programmers out there for Ninja Trader, Jeremy seems to be one of the top ones. And uh, yeah, I feel kind of fortunate that I'm working with him. So he's done some really cool stuff. Yeah, and I know he's done cool stuff because <laughs> even the guys at Ninja Trader have commented to us <laughs> that they're really surprised at what Jeremy's been able to do for Ninja Trader. They never they had never expected anybody to accomplish what Jeremy has done for Ninja Trader with Bloodhound and Blackbird. All right, well, guys, uh, I don't see any questions on the board here. Um, all right, guys, we'll wrap it up there, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'll see most of you guys again tomorrow.